I think we will then um, uh, go over to my next guest. I think we have Tay. Um, Tay, are you with me? Yes. Hey, Tay, how are things going for you? Welcome back to the Rehab Power Hour. How are you doing? Pretty, pretty good. I think it's been, what, a couple of weeks since we last talked. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Well, talk to me about um, what can I do for you today? Um, I, I seen on the um, Motors Nova Instagram uh, story where they were going to be discussing the plateau that people go through whenever they uh, have a stroke. And I feel like oh. I'm uh, experiencing that right now. And I'm just trying okay. to see what I can do to move past that and continue moving forward with my uh, progress. Sure, sure. So maybe it might be helpful then um, to kind of remind everyone what Tay's talking about, because it's actually kind of a complex topic. Um, so uh, just clear, Tay, you're talking about plateau and progress, right, in terms of your functional abilities, your movement capabilities. Okay. So yeah. this concept, let me kind of break this down for you guys. Um, this concept of plateau is a um, basically you can imagine a an x y axis okay and on the x axis we have time and on the y axis we have some magnitude of improvement right on the top of it you could imagine as being kind of your pre-stroke um level and on the bottom maybe it was your um, um your worst um, you know kind of worst experience or your worst or your most limited functional ca uh, capabilities and what can happen is following a stroke that relationship with improvement is not what we call linear, meaning every single day that you go by does not necessarily mean that you're going to pro um, progress the same amount over time. And so sometimes you might improve much more, sometimes you might improve a lot less. Or in some instances, if you're not able to do rehab at all, you might actually what's called regress in which you kind of go back down. You lose function over time. Um, and that can be really true, very common if you don't have access to rehab. But I think the concept that Tay's talking about is this idea of what's called plateauing, in which case you can kind of visualize this, where there's kind of a uh, uh, basically a, 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 a straight line of no progress over time. And this is something that is, um, let me be completely honest, is not well understood on the underlying mechanisms. Uh, and what I mean by underlying mechanisms, I mean like um, the neural um, sort of correlates of this. Um, but we can sort of draw some conclusions and we can kind of draw some, some general uh, um, sort of inferences from this. And generally speaking, people will plateau under a couple of conditions. Um, they will plateau if they have hit what's called kind of a ceiling. Uh, and that ceiling could be actually what's, what amounts to a hard cap of basically how much you can improve. And this is actually true in certain situations, right? Like there is there is going to be a, um, uh, you can think about this maybe in terms of just general physiology, right? There's going to be a finite amount of improvement that people can run at, right? There is a there's a finite amount of, of, of speed that we can achieve, right? Like there's going to be um, no instance in the future, li likely no instance in the future, unless some significant evolutionarily things, things happen, that humans will be running um, 100 meter um, sprints in, two seconds, right? That's a very unlikely event. There's gonna be a hard cap somewhere. Um, but uh, with respect to rehab, those similar things happen, right? There are gonna be just sort of upper limits to what we can uh, achieve with um, the sort of brains that we have after the neurologic injury. Um, and that is, um, that's sort of an unfortunate realization to be made, but it is, it is often true. The other, um, the other sort of reason for getting plateaus is very related to a concept that I've talked about many times before on Rehab Power Hour. And that is this idea of what's called a sufficient stimuli. And what happens that's kind of um, encoded in this idea of this change over time is you have to be driving your rehab hard enough in order to respond. Um, and the way I can kind of imagine this or kind of help you understand this is that if you go to a um, if you go to a gym and you're lifting weights and you always lift a five pound weight, um, if a bicep, for instance, um, you're really going to get um, strong up to a point. But what you have to do is the next time, once you get strong enough to lift that five pound weight regularly, you have to actually progress the weight to actually cause an increase in that stimulus intensity to drive what's called further adaptation. 
this is not only true for your muscles, for strength training, but it's also true for plastic changes in your brain. And so you always have to make sure that you're driving the, the rehab hard enough to cause a positive change or positive adaptation, also known as making sure your plasticity is being driven hard enough. So that's kind of what we're talking about. But Tate, let me ask you a question. I think, um, have you seen progress in the last couple of months? I know you have been using the, the Modus Hand for a while, but what kind of things have you seen over the last couple of months? I think since I first started using it, I have seen decreased tone in my hand and everything, but I'm aiming to regain like more function in my sure. arm and wrist and regain my fine motor skills. Sure. That's what I'm struggling sure. at. I'm not seeing any progress in those areas. Sure. I feel like I'm at a standstill. Yeah, yeah. I think, again, this is kind of um, along the lines of what I was talking about, right? If you, uh, you may have uh, uh, induced a lot of those positive changes to improve your range of motion and reduce your tone. But then you have to kind of, you can't continue to do the same type of, of rehab, right? You have to kind of change it a little bit to make it harder, right? You have to incorporate more um, uh, fine control. Uh, you have to incorporate more time dependent changes such that, because when you're operating in the world, you can't just rely on static things. You have to operate in a time space as well. And so incorporating different activities would maybe be the next thing that we need to do. And we can actually make these modifications by incorporating more difficult tasks for you to complete with the modus hand. We can yeah, change right. things like not only, it actually what may happen, and this is interesting, is we may actually opt, depending on where your range of motion is, we may opt to actually reduce the range of motion slightly, okay? But we may encourage different types of activities within this within this kind of bound that you have really good control over right because the modus hand can actually push you into bounds where you don't have volitional control um, that's going to help you increase your range of motion increase your sort of general motor control but if you have um maybe some good fine control in a narrower range we can actually go down into that range and do a lot more dedicated kind of fine motor skills where you're having to do fine control of your wrist and your hand so I think that could be something that we could do together. But let's mm -hmm. first actually go. Um, actually, let me let me ask you a question. How does that sound? It sounds pretty good. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just quickly go over here and just check out some of the data really quickly. Um, now, have you been using the Modus Hand today? The who? Have you been using the Modus Hand today? No, I, not today. Not today. Okay. So we could actually go through a quick check today if you wanted to, to um, see kind of where we are. All right. Okay. So um, is it turned on right now? Let's see, where, yeah. where are you right now? Okay. I'm on the assessment screen. On the assessment screen, okay. Let's just see here, make sure we're getting data. Do you, what do you see on the screen on the left hand side right now? The, the live angle is like going up and down, the numbers. Okay. okay. Give me an approximate. What do you see approximately? Negative uh, four point okay. one. Very good. Six. Yeah. Yeah. We're in the same ballpark. This is good. I just want to make sure we are in the same, uh, the same, uh, the same universe. So good. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to drop out all the assistants here, Tay. Um, and what I'd like you to do is Go ahead and move your wrist and your hand. Go ahead and move down as far as you can and move up as far as you can. Very good. Okay, I'm moving down right now. Yep, yep, very good. And then relax and come up as far as you can. You know, this may be more challenging for you, and that's okay. Yeah, that's the part I struggle with the most. Yeah, that's the stuff. That's cool. Yep, yep, okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to go in here. I'm going to make a couple of modifications. Okay. So you're going to feel some assistance come on. Okay. Once it kicks in, looks like it's leveled out there. Now what I'd like you to do is now I'd like you to go up as far as you can for me and do extension. Okay. It's like it's stuck. It's like it's not moving at all. You moved a little bit. And I'm happy to go down in deflection for me. Yeah, 
Nice. Very good. And then up into extension for me as far as you can. Just relax. First of all, deep breath, relax, and then come up into extension as far as you can. So I hope you can appreciate it. That, that is, in fact, moving, my friend. So you are, you're getting some movement there with some assistance. This is where it's kind of kicking in and amplifying that. This is really good. On my end, I don't feel like it's moving at all when I go into extension. It's like, it's, yeah, it's so, so you actually, and you can do this again, where you got down to around 20 degrees of flexion and you're able to move up to up 20 degrees into maybe 20, uh, basically to neutral, which is good. So I'm gonna have you do it again. So go ahead and go down for me into flexion as far as you can. Really go down there. Very good. Very, very good. And have you relax, take a deep breath. And as you start to come up, really try to go up into extension, really go up. Very good. It's not doing nothing. So look at those numbers on the left-hand side. They are going up, right? So you're now up to around four degrees right now into extension. So before you were going down into like, you had about 20 degrees of 19 degrees, 19.3 degrees of flexion. And then now you're up to five, four or five degrees consistently up into extension. So this is what I called before. I think before we actually had you moving up into higher ranges of motion when you when you didn't have a whole lot of volitional control up there. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to reduce our range of motion for you specifically. Uh, I think this is a, a technique we can use for someone who is really focused on getting that fine motor work. Yeah. And what we'll do. So I'm actually going to compress it. I'm going to move the range of motion. This seems a little bit counterintuitive, God. But there's a reason. There's a method to my madness here. Um, I'm going to move it down. And I actually want to set all of these and kind of clamp these values at this at wherever they are. Okay. And Tay, okay, what I'm gonna have you do is hit the back button for me on the top left. And what you may experience, Tay, is and this is gonna be true for if ever I do this with anyone else, um, you may experience that the scores start to change. But and you go and hit home for me, we can go ahead and hit heart therapy. But the, what may happen is the scores may change for you. So you may have to kind of uh, uh, be, be comfortable with not getting necessarily high scores anymore. That's okay. But we're kind of progressing into a different type and intent of that rehab. And that is really focused on um, volitional control, really focused on um, where you have that, 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 good, that good motor control. We want to sort of take in that range of motion and amplify it as much as we can and improve it. So mm -hmm. go ahead and begin therapy for me, Tech. Okay, so just to kind of reiterate what I did take before you had a range of motion that was pretty large, right? It was around 20 degrees of flexion down to around up to around 30 degrees of extension, a little bit, a little bit higher than that. That was with a fair amount of assistance. Okay, but what I did is I actually just went in and asked you to do that with much less assistance. And mm -hmm. what happens is with basically 50% assistance, you're able to move around 20 degrees of total movement. Okay. That's less than you had before, but this is what you can do with less assistance. So I'm, I'm really taking away the help that the modus hand is providing. Yeah. But that's going to force you to do much more of the work. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be harder. I'll just be straight with you. It's going to be harder, uh, but that's, that's okay. That's okay. So as soon as this gets ready to go, we will, uh, we'll dive straight into it here. Um, I'm just actually um, getting word, guys, that it looks like um, 11 a.m. Eastern time on our Facebook and Instagram. That's when the rules will be um, actually um, posted for the uh, the new contest. So, uh, so stay tuned in those channels for those uh, those details. Tay, has it um, um, been pulled up on your side? Right now I'm on the thermometer uh, game okay. setting. Okay. Yeah, I think we just maybe lost connection there in terms of the share screen. That's okay. See, are we getting anything here? Oh, did you hit play or no? No, not yet. Oh, go ahead and hit play for me. Sorry. Okay. 
All right, it's playing. Okay. Okay. Very good. Remember this one, not such a big motor control activity, right? This mm -hmm. is more preparatory in nature. Yeah. We can actually go ahead and skip this one if you don't mind. All right. For the sake of spending time with the ones that really are going to matter for you. Mm -hmm. And I see a question here in the live stream here. Um, I see Johnny is asking me um, if we can do same sort of adjustments. Yeah, Johnny, I think, yeah, we can certainly do that. Um, yeah, this is um, and this is actually a tough thing to deal with, right? Because um, I think we get used to performing at a high level with respect with respect to some of the games. Um, but if we really want to focus on a specific sort of targeted fine motor program, um, those scores are likely going to go down. Um, but if you, as long as you're comfortable with that, and as long as you sort of uh, um, uh, realize that, then we can of course make that modification, um, just like we did with Tay here. So Tay, let's go ahead and hit play. Uh Okay. Very good. So go all the way down from as far as you can. Very good. Take a deep breath and go all the way up. Very good. All the way. Keep going. Keep going. So you see that first bit, Tay? That was all you, right? That's all you. That's all your extension. The hand, the modus hand is not in that assistance there. Turn around it's as far as you can. Extension is uh raising the hand up. Yep. Infection is yep. going down. Yep. Yep. I can. You, I, you, you're, yeah, you're going well down. Yeah, I'm, I can do that pretty good, but yep. extension, I'm, I have trouble with that. I know you are, Tay, but what I'm trying to get you to realize is that that first rebound, when you're coming up quickly like that, well, yeah. it's in relaxed period right now. So go down as far as you can in deflection. Go down, go down. Keep going down. Up, 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 as far as you can. That first bit, that is not the modus hand helping you. The modus yeah. hand does come in kind of that top little bit, but this mm -hmm. is where you are. It's going to be a, it's going to be a struggle, but it is um, that is where you really need to kick in, and it's yeah. going to kick in and help kind of get you a little bit. But that first bit of you going up into extension, that's all you. Okay. All right. Very good. So it's a little bit of a smaller range. Um, around 20 degrees instead of around 50. But I think this will be important for you to really get as much improvement as possible. And I think you're going to need to stay really cognizant. Right now, I am distracting you. This is not what we want for optimal rehab, I'll say. But um, mm -hmm. uh, for the sake of explanation, I think this is good. Very good. So what are your thoughts on this, Ted? I think I think it would be good to kind of go through this. Um, you know, so if we are having some plateau, what we just did was make it a lot harder, and we changed things around, right? What we did is mm -hmm. we just took that five pound weight and we turned it into pound weight, basically. Okay. Maybe not twenty pound weight, maybe a five, uh, maybe a, a ten pound weight. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we so we just changed the stimuli. And what I want to see now is is what the improvements are like. And maybe a couple of weeks and we can kind of um, come back and, and, and check on things. All right, that's fine. Okay, very good. So will it be like this for the rest of the game settings too? Yep, they're all going to be hard. Mm -hmm. All right. Are you okay with that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, very good. All right. I actually have a couple of questions for you guys. This is not often that happens, um, but for the live stream um, here, I actually am going to ask you guys if you would like to kind of see uh, maybe a, a segment with me sort of describing what it's like to maybe be a therapist in terms of what it's like on the reimbursement side, um, what it's like maybe to explain uh, what co-payments are uh, and how kind of it works in the nitty gritty. I know oftentimes, um, you know, there are all these terms that are thrown around um, and maybe it can be hard to understand what the rehab experiences is like. Um, I'm actually going through this myself right now. I'm going through some rehab for me. And um, in terms of, I, I was realizing that maybe it might be nice to kind of share my experience with you and kind of walk through, well, what a bill is like, um, what, um, and what it's like um, from a provider's perspective to kind of see, well, what are the, what are the codes that go into it? Um, and what type of 
um, uh, what, you know, what types of, what is, what is co-pay? What is co-insurance? What are these sort of things? And why are there caps? Uh, so let me know if you think this might be interesting to uh, discuss on maybe a future power hour. Um, I do have a little bit of experience doing this from the provider side, but also from the patient side as well. Uh, so let me know in the comments if you think that would be useful uh, or maybe interesting. Uh, it'd be great to uh, great to uh, great to hear from you guys. Actually, uh, um, uh, Tay and, and Leon, I don't know if you guys would find that interesting. I know you guys have probably had many experiences with rehab and are probably experts by now. But let me know. Do you think that would be an interesting topic for you to uh, to hear about? I I didn't hear it. I was still doing my workout. Yeah, you still. St yeah, no worries. Think, um, basically, just asking, um, would it be helpful, or do you think it would be interesting for me to um, share with you what uh, the sort of insurance game is like for on a, on a physical therapist side? I can kind of um, tell you my perspective is not only as a provider but also as a patient, because I was actually going. I'm going through my own rehab right now, and uh, I was getting getting my bills, and I had questions about them, and um, I was wondering if it could be useful to share with the rehab community about what. Um, what each of the things means on a bill and what a co-pay is, what a co-insurance, why there are rate caps and these sorts of things and what are the typical costs. So I'd be happy to kind of share my experience. Uh, I was wondering if you guys thought that might be um, a useful thing to go through. Yeah, I, I think so, it's fine. Okay. Um, I think Shakira and, uh, and Leon, let me know what you think. We're actually pretty good on that end. Okay. Um, okay. The whole breakdown with the co-pays and the reason why and the codes and all that stuff. Actually. Sure, sure. Okay. All right. Very good. Well, thanks so much. Okay. So I guess we're kind of coming out of the last couple of minutes here of our Rhea Power Hour. I think uh, I've got some comments here. So thanks so much, Stacey. Yeah, um, I'll be sure to uh, at least put it out there and see if there's a, a, a good reception for it. It doesn't, of course, have to be an exhaustive situation. Um, very good. Um, and let me just go through the, the actual questions here and see exactly if there are any more that I haven't um, I haven't addressed. Let's see here. Looks like we have, um, yeah, so I think maybe Johnny, um, if you would like, feel free to reach me and we can kind of um, um, get you scheduled for Rehab Power or we can do kind of that same sort of assessment. Um, it's much more of a different assessment where we'll actually figure out where those ranges of motion are for blind motor control and then um, make those adjustments to make it a bit tougher. I think um, Robin is, is also, recommending that some of the game changes could be useful as well. I think you're exactly right, Robin. And actually, I might do that with Tay right now while he's doing this. Um, I think we made it, we've made, of course, a change on the exercises in terms of the uh, uh, ranges of motion. But Tay, I'm actually going to add in a couple of games for you that are also quite a bit different. Okay, uh, that's fine. What are, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and make, um, let's see here, two, mm, two adjustments, I think. And you may experience, you may not see them on this round, but the next time you go into your therapy, maybe tomorrow, um, you mm -hmm. should see them on there, okay? Okay. So the, those are now put on your on your um, actual uh, prescription. And I think the, oh, right. yep, yep. So I think um, they're challenging. And so uh, you'll, you'll notice them. Oh, right. So that's a it's a good uh, good get there from Robin. So thanks, Robin, for uh, for reminding me about that. Okay, I think that's actually a question here from Robin about um, what if you can't get into flexion with challenge? Interesting. Yeah. So I think this concept of um, assistance into flexion is is an interesting one um, because the motor's hand has the extension capability. Sort of the muscle is is helping you into extension. It can, by nature of reducing its assistance into extension, provide assistance into flexion. And I think it depends on what specifically might be limiting your ability to get into flexion, um, Robin. If it's um, some sort of non-standard tone in your uh, extensors, that may contribute, and that may be something we need to talk about um, uh, in maybe a more nuanced way. Um, but oftentimes what happens if you can't get into flexion, there could be a situation where you're actually not using the hand mentor on an appropriate surface. Like if you don't have overhang and you're kind of maybe you pillow and you're having some trouble getting into flexion because it's being blocked, um, that can be really common. Um, but if you're not able to get into extension in a sufficient way, Robin, maybe what needs to happen is we need to reassess where those values are um, in terms of flexion values and make sure that they are appropriately tuned for you, right? Because you can imagine if you can only move at 20 degrees of flexion and instead of 25, 
um, that's going to be really frustrating because those two things are incongruent, right? You wouldn't actually be able to um, hit the, uh, the achievement or the actual goal. So I think that could be a good reason to, um, to reach out to me and we can maybe do a, a, a reassessment at this point, Robin. So very good. Well, all right, guys, I think this has been a, a very, very um, productive React Power Hour. And I just want to, again, remind you guys of our next React Power Hour is scheduled for Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So do join me then. I think we'll have Dr. Steve Wolf back on talking about some scientific articles. Um, and also look out for our um, uh, 11 a.m., I guess, drop of those rules um, and the sort of explanation of the contest coming up. You can find that on Instagram and Facebook. So I guess with that, guys, I want to um, thank Edwis here. I want to thank Kira and Leon. I want to thank Tay as well. I think we have uh, Dr. Webster here as well in the in the um, in the Real Power Hour booth. So thanks so much, Dr. Webster, for being here. Yes. Uh, I want to thank all of you guys here uh, for being with me today on this Friday evening. I hope you have a great rest of your, um, I guess, a little bit less of the week, and have a great weekend. And I look forward to seeing you on Monday. Okay, guys, and bye for now.